This is David Frederick, and I'm front row. Okay, here's going to be my front row review of the Great American Bash 1985 at Charlotte Memorial Stadium, July 6, 1995, the first Great American Bash. Um, the list of matches is, there's a kind of a contradiction where on Wikipedia, the way they uh, list the matches and when the uh, video uh, posted at, by Gordon Sully and Bill Apter, it was called Ringmasters of Great American Bash, um... Wikipedia lists as a first match, Jimmy Vanner versus Paul Jones' dog car match. But the video starts out with the first match I reviewed was Ron Bass versus Buddy Landell with James J. Dillon. And that's the first match. I believe the video is I believe the video is more accurate. I don't think Wikipedia has an accurate uh with the match the match listings in the beginning of the show. Um and it, yeah, so I believe it opens up with um Buddy Landell versus Ron Bass with J.J. Dillon. Um, it was apparently two he you know, two heels, but with Ron Bass breaking up from J.J. Dillon because J.J. Dillon uh, uh, rather of uh, he changed working with Buddy Landell. They called pro his protege. Buddy Landell was a sorry, a lame version, a Ric Flair wannabe, calling himself a nature boy. Uh, yeah, he had all the look, but he had no. Pfft, he was a, he was a real. He was a a rookie, and no matter how long he worked, he seemed to be a rookie to me. Um, a vague, much of a brawl, started much on the outside of the ring, and a lot were wrong. It was a lot more, the match more of a lot more tension where Ron Bass trying to get, his whole, get a hold of J.J. Dillon because he was mad at J.J. Dillon spending more, too much time with Buddy Landell. Um, but the match ended with a time limit draw. All right, the next match in the Great American Bash 85, Ole and Arn Anderson, the national tag team champions, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, well, second version of it, uh, against Dick Slater, the unpredictable Dick Slater, Mad Dog Bustler. Now, one thing about this, there's, there's a few things that I found I had a note about. Dick Slater is, yes, unpredictable. Um, he is a type of go between face and heel, back and forth through the years. Mad Dog Bustler, I've never known to be a, a face. So he a heel. So it seems like um, the Andersons versus heels. I don't know who the fans are cheering for here, but it's a good brawl. But uh, the video seems to be short. I don't know whether the match is short or the video is short. But it's a good brawl. Kind of a good brawl to bots. The only disappointing thing that really ruins the match is, is Sonny Fargo. Now I know he's a Memphis legend. He's a, apparently a Crockett referee, but he was very slow in this match, and he seems he could not keep up with this. A in a you try to enjoy this match, and it seems like heel versus he heel team versus a heel team, but you can't tell who the fans are cheering for. But it's a good match to watch. Good match for its time period to watch. Um, Ole Anderson pins Buzz Sawyer, but it, it even uh, Tony Schiavone, who was announced, you know, doing the commentary, says uh, to, no. Uh, it was a match. It was a match out of control, kind of, and even in the ring, all four minutes, all the time. That Sonny Parko hard had a hard time keeping up, but um, he is able to count for only to pin Buzz for uh, Ole Anderson to retain the national tag team titles and defeat Dick Slater, Buzz Sawyer. All right, the next match in the Great American Bash, nineteen eighty five, six man tag. Um, Another match. It's another match that's kind of out of place. The Wikipedia listing says it's number two, match number two, and the video it's not match number three. That really doesn't matter. Um, very interesting list of uh, six man tag: Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez, the rookie Sam Houston, Avalanche, Buzz, Tyler against Superstar Billy Graham, Conga the Barbarian, and Abdul the Butcher with Paul Jones. No, Paul Jones before the Four Horsemen. Paul Jones had a really strong stable of really monster wrestlers. Wow, and his feud with Jimmy Van. You know, Jimmy Van had his uh. No, I think he had the most difficult feud with so many guys that Paul Jones would have for uh, the Paul Jones army. But the six-man tag, uh, really, really interesting the way, you know, yeah, good very good interaction you know, with the short video to watch. I'd like to see the full video. Um, I hope a, a full video comes out on the uh, WWE Network, but it's only av available on YouTube. I've seen the, I remember the original VHS tape, and it's, it's still also a one hour long. Um, it's good, very good interaction, six-man tag. One in the way they describe each other, um, even uh, Tony Schiavone commenting and describes the Bill the Butcher as a human tank. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but the, yeah, it's a very good interaction between the, between the uh, six. Um, I thought that the heels had won this match when I first saw this tape when I was a teen. When, the te when I saw this ta tape as a teenager, I thought the heels won, but I was I was wrong. Um, they said that it was a big upset. Sam Houston ends up hitting superstar Billy Graham because, you know, all six men, pure six brawl. Um, again, a Sonny Fargo referee kind of, again, lost control. But uh, the uh, faces come out victorious with Sam Houston upsetting superstar Billy Graham for the pin. All right, the next match, according to Wikipedia, was the first one. I would go by with the video. Um... Uh, that this that the video has the right set uh, the sequence of matches from front from the beginning to start, the dog collar match Jimmy Valiant versus Paul Jones this feud, <laughs> I love how Bob Cottle sorry, uh, sorry Bill Apter <laughs> they uh, Bill Apter said this there is no end in sight for this feud you know that this went on for uh, t two to three years Jimmy Valiant and Paul Jones wow now the dog collar match now don't do we want to compare this to the Stark 83 Piper Valentine dog car match? I wouldn't even say half as bad. Not a half as bad. It, it, you know, because Jimmy Valiant and Paul Jones are such a hot, really hot, really, really hot feud. Um, it's yeah, bloody, but um, it's not as a long brawl as Piper and Valentine was, and that was much more legendary, because being, uh, Starcade, though the Great American Bash did become just as popular as Starcade. Um, this is one of the rare times Jimmy Vant got a win. V Jimmy Vant did not have many much wins on Paul Jones or his army. Um, Jimmy Vant had Buzz Avalanche, uh, Avalanche Buzz Tyler in a corner, Paul Jones had... The I love the I love the description of human tank Abdul the butcher. Um, at first, when the beginning of the match, uh, Jones didn't want to put the dog car on, and uh, he wanted to put it on the, on, on Abdullah apparently. But Buzz Tyler cornered Jones, put him in the corner, and forced the, he put the dog car on Paul Jones himself. Um, it was you know for 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 Jones and Valiant, it was a uh, yes a match on in in their in their own right. You know the, you, if you know their feud. Um, this, this, this type of match would have fit their feud, definitely. Where Piper Valentine, you didn't know their feud very well, but the dog collar match, this match fit very well for Jimmy Vant and Paul Jones. Um, Ab Ab Abdullah, but, okay, Jimmy Vant put Paul Jones in a sleeper, but, uh, Abdullah tried to climb in the ring, Jimmy went after him, back him off, um, <laughs> apparently, I don't, somehow, uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy, uh, where Paul Jones uh, get, uh, goes to interfere with Valiant and Paul Abdul fighting, and uh, Jimmy hits uh, Paul Jones, I think, with a chain, knocks him out, and he pin, and he pin, and Jimmy like, pins Paul Jones in the, in this dog car match again. This is rare for Jimmy Valiant to get a win in Paul on Paul Jones. All right, the next match, tag team for the tag. It, it, it should have been both titles, honest to God, it really was. Ivan and Koloff and Crusher Khrushchev, the NWA World Tag Team Champions, versus AWA World Tag Team Champions, the Road Warriors, with Paul Elring. And Paul Elring still has his blonde hair, and later I know he changes the black hair. He looked better with black hair. Um... I am not. Ne I never was never a fan of Crusher Khrushchev because everybody knows he was so obviously a, an American. He talked American, where Ivan and Nikita really sold being Russians. Um, you know, the longer Ivan Kov and Crusher Khrushchev remained in the ring, the longer the match they had. I guess the better they were. But they you know uh, the one that went before this this match started. Uh, Bill After describes. You know. Everyone thought World War Three would be with, with nuclear weapons. Well, this is fought in the. This is it happened in the ring where uh, America is presented by the Road Warriors against the Russians, Ivan Kov and Krasnov Khrushchev. And apparently, Ivan and Nikita Koloff were the tag team champions. But the three a three person rule, similar to what they call the the Freebird rule, that it was a three person team. They could trade off who might defend the titles. But it's a long a longer Ivan Kov and Krasnov Khrushchev uh, did longer matches. Uh, they did the uh, same thing with the Rock and Roll Express. The longer the match, they go they go half hour, forty five minutes. The longer it it gets really a good brawl, a good tag team brawl. There was one moment. Wow, I've never I never seen that all the time. All the uh, years I grew up watching uh, Crockett wrestling. Um, 
they were going to put, I believe it was uh, Ivan Koloff in, t uh, Animal was going to ha have him, uh, Hawk put Ivan Koloff up on top of Rover Animal, Rover Animal was on the top rope, they were going to do a off the top rope body slam, I don't think I've ever seen that before, that would have been new, but that got stopped, um, I believe by, uh, yeah, uh, by uh, Crusher Khrushchev, um, but when the ch a chair comes in the ring, and then Hawk, he starts hitting other Russians with a chair. He pushes the referee down. The Road Warriors should have been disqualified, but because it was a, a, an off an all four man brawl and a, a match of these all these four guys, it's typical for you no know, all four man brawl. Um, it ends in a double disqualification. All right, the next match in the Great American Bash 85 is one of the strangest matches. How this match, it must have been a special challenge because if it was announced as a special challenge, it would make sense. U.S. Champion Magnum T.A. versus Kamali Gun and Giant with Skandar Akbar. Now, this ta this match, besides this Great American Bash, um, this this VHS release was also will be seen in the best of Magnum's matches following his, uh, his tragic car accident. Um, in the Crockett Cup 1987 um, Titan Tournament v VHS, they picked three matches of his, be his best matches. Again, this it's it, it's definitely a special challenge for Magnum against Kamala because being a lot very Kamala being a you no know, a lot you no know, a large very large man. Um, I, I think maybe Kamala is, would be Mid Atlantic's version of Andre the Giant. Now is that in uh, out the viewpoint of Andre? It's just I guess Mid Atlantic's version. Of a you know Magnum taking on a really big heavy guy like that, and um, Kamala. That was interesting. He he did um, Kamala did his body splash on Magnum. He kicked out. Did he did a body splash on Magnum's back? Kicked out. And uh, once uh, Magnum TA made it, started making his comeback, um, he got a good body slam on Kamala. And then Skandar Akbar tried to come in and you know, prevent the pin, but that, that's when uh, Tommy Young uh, went to you know, disqualify Kamala for Skandar Akbar coming in. Uh, I think everybody was waiting for. Uh, they really promoted. They showed off Magnum's uh, belly to belly suplex. I I get kick out of Al Gordon so he calls that a suplex. Even 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 Magnum's belly to belly suplex. That ends with an X. And Gordon constantly calls it a suplex, even even the um, the regular suplex that other wrestlers do. <laughs> I don't know why Gordon Sully constantly calls it a suplex. Sounds like an a on a y, but um, Magnum did a really good body slam on on Kamala. Uh, but when um, a, after the mat, a, after uh, Tommy Young disqualified Kamala, um, Kamala went to attack again, continued attack on Magnum. Uh, he um, uh, come out went to do, you know throw him in the ropes magnum reversed into the, the he did the belly to belly but the belly to belly suplex on kamal but it didn't come off very good it was very awkward the body slam um uh, did look more much more impressive uh, magnum um still u.s champion defeats uh kamal by disqualification Okay, the next match was uh, NWA World Champion Ric Flair versus Nikita Koloff. And this is Nikita's first shot at the uh, world title. Now, apparently what led to this match is uh, an answer David Crockett. And this is one of the most infamous moments in, t in, in Crockett TV history where David Crockett uh, was arguing with Ivan Nikita Koloff and they demanded a world title match. And Crockett, you know, David Crockett was saying that there's other contenders. You'll get, you'll get um, a shot when you get a shot. And... Uh, I mean, got fed up with David interrupting him, and Nikita out of nowhere sickled him, and it was a hell of a. Uh, it's the shock value. A Crockett was so legendary for David or his brother Jim Crockett. That's what no. That's what you love watching Crockett wrestling. The shock value. You never know what was going to happen. Now with this match, um, Rick Flood's always described Nikita as green and rookie. And this match, okay, here's the thing. He is a Nikita Kolf is a powerhouse yes <laughs> i would put him over hulk hogan sorry nikita is a powerhouse big guy wow you know for a long time that we all believed ivan nikita golf were real russians and i hate to break kayfabe but um you all believe the way they spoke the way they act the way they dressed they were real russians and it was one of the greatest sales in the history of wrestling um 
Deathly Flair was the uh, face all most of the year until he j ended up joining the horse. No, turning on Dusty Rhodes later in the year and joining the horse and becoming creating creating the Horseman. But uh, being fl that Flair was the uh, face, uh, another infamous moment of this particular match in the ba Grand American Bash show in Charlotte Memorial Stadium between Flair and Nikita is a fan. Uh, Climb into the ring, got fed up with Nikita, uh, getting a better flair, and a whole lot of security jumped in the ring to get rid of this guy. <laughs> One of the most infamous moments of this particular match. Um, but you see how much of a rookie uh, Nikita, Nikita was for a very long time. And even Flemmett, too. It, it was difficult to work with Nikita Koloff. Um, Nikita Cole being the powerhouse and really dominated Flair, but Flair, the ring general, uh, he could work with anybody. He could work with a broomstick. <laughs> um, Flair still got blood, a bit bloody. Um, David Crockett said he would call this match fair and down the line. Yes, he did. Uh, even though he was attacked by Nikita, he played a fair referee. You know, he did not belong as referee. This, honest to God, for David Crockett to be involved, it didn't belong. This was the first major moment for Nikita Koloff. And it should have been a Tommy Young referee match. But um, the moment the, it, you know, it came down to um, Nikita went to bring, you know, uh, kind of body slam Ric Flair back in the ring. Ric Flair was outside, and Nikita, apparently Nikita just falls back. I honestly call it a lame. I wouldn't. I don't want to lay, label it a lame finish, but it was. It was too much easy of a pin. It was a good hard fought match between the two, um, even though it was Nikita's very first major singles match uh, against Ric Flair. They would have you know, a bunch more, but it wasn't. It wasn't that great. You no, know, great of a match because you no, know, it's because yeah, Nikita's the rookie, even though he's a powerhouse. Um, for, for David Crockett to be involved, eh, the referee, and the, sorry, the uh, fan interference was, made it a, a bit more interesting, but I, it was what it was, but I think it could have been a, a, a bit more um, a surprise pin for Flair. Flair did get a surprise pin on Nikita, but I think it needed needed more, a, a, a little bit better um Pin then Nikita pulling, bringing Flair back in and, and, and falling backward on a body slam, maybe slipping or Flair grabbing in a small package. That would have made more sense because you would have gotten better of the of of the rook of Nikita being a rook, a rookie wrestler. But Fla no Flair did uh, defeat Nikita in this in this first match between the two. All right, the last match of the night, uh, steel cage match, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes against Tully Blanchard. Uh, Tully Blanchard was the TV champion with Baby Doll, and both were on the line. Uh, the TV title and Baby Doll. Dusty would get Baby Doll for 30 days if he won this cage match. Now, with Dusty Rhodes is a ring general, and grew up on watching Dusty Rhodes. Um, any match, Dusty Rhodes is in knowledge. And I mean anyone Dusty wrestles with. That's just the same as Ric Flair. Anyone Dusty ever worked with. Oh my God, you love watching him. And a, a match with Tully Blanchard, any match with Tully Blanchard, enjoyable. Any match Dusty ever worked with Ric Flair, any match, any single person Dusty ever worked with is enjoyable to watch. And this is one of the, you know, a <laughs> uh, bloody cage match between the two. They've had so, t Dusty and Tully had so many great matches. They traded the TV title back and forth, back and forth. My God. Um... <laughs> the, uh, the one, the one abrupt thing, you know, as much as this match is, you no. Know, uh, it's it's not one of their greater greater matches. Um, again, it's enjoyable to watch. Uh, but um, but oh man, be, 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 you can hear Baby Doll constantly yelling and cheering for Tully, and whenever you no, know, and when uh, how Dusty defeats Tully Blanchard, it's it's not one of his uh his typical w ways to win. You know uh. Uh, Tony Schiavone commentating, he said, Does, Dusty does a, a clothesline toy. Oh, a clothesline, not one of his normal moves. Yeah, yes it is. Um, <laughs> uh, Baby Doll apparently get, gives, somehow uh, tosses, or somehow get t Tully gets a elbow pad. I guess they want, they didn't label it as like a, a loaded elbow pad, some maybe a metal piece in an elbow pad, but as soon as Tully put the elbow pad on, oh my god, this was a really interesting moment for Dusty. Dusty come up behind Tully up on the top rope and in the cage and Dusty 
grabs him by the tights and yanks him down. Okay. <laughs> yanks him down, hits the ring, um, then Dusty quickly gets Tully in a pile driver. Now that is a definitely a different move for Dusty. Never have you ever seen Dusty use a pile driver. You know, that's typically um, Jerry Lawler Memphis, Paul Orndorff, I mean, Don Morocco. There's a couple guys who use the pile drivers. Dusty, I have. You've never known him. I don't think you ever. Can you name a future match that Dusty would ever use the pile driver? It, it, it was just strange. He, he forcefully yanked Tully off the top rope. Tully did not get to use this elbow. Apparent some black elbow pad that Baby gave him. And Dusty quickly got a pile driver. And Baby Doll screaming, No! <laughs> And Dusty got a quick, good pin, 32,000, massive cheer. Dusty is the new TV champion and gets Baby Doll for 30 days. If you like this video, please subscribe, comment, like or dislike, and thank you for watching.